Hello, welcome back to the channel. And we're now into September, which I would count as one of the autumnal months. But looking back at August, which is the plan for this video to review the solar output from my roof and my energy consumption in August, look at the weather throughout August, I would have said that was um, feeling fairly like autumn as well. We had quite a few days with lots of cloud cover, we had rain, it wasn't that warm. We weren't getting to the point where we were seriously considering putting on the heating, but there were certainly evenings where we were putting on extra layers of uh, jumpers and clothing to keep warm. So August wasn't quite the summer month that I was hoping for it to be. So as usual, before I start, um, please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Um, you don't have to watch my videos if you subscribe. Um, but um, at least um, I will get an extra subscriber and help me on that way towards this channel being monetized. Um, and let's do the uh, bookkeeping or the housekeeping. The numbers I'm presenting to you today are taken from um, the Solis Cloud app, my smart meter and my export meter. Um, the money I've calculated on Import is based on my British deck gas tariff, which is about 19.5p per kilowatt hour of import. My export is with So Energy, and that's paying only 5p, uh, but I'm looking to change that uh, this month. And um, I'm not taking into account any of my standing charge or any standing charges. Um, as far as my general consumption goes, um, my he central heating, um, hot water, and my hob a gas, my oven's electric, and usual electric for everything else. I do have an electric car, but I can't charge it at home because I don't have a driveway. Um, so let's have go straight into the figures then. So these are all coming off my um, 12 panel array of um, 385 kilowatt, uh, 500 uh, sorry, 385 watts each, so that totals 4.65 kilowatts. That goes down into a 5 kilowatt solace inverter, and then that powers the house, or uh, gets stored in a pure drive 5 kilowatt hour battery. If you've seen the, uh, my previous videos, this is all familiar to you. Anyway, so this is the uh, generation graph for this month. As you can see, it's okay-ish. There are some very low days, particularly around the 19th of um, August, where we only generated two kilowatt hours for the whole day. It was very dark, very grey, very rainy. And even on the last day, the 31st of August, um, which was yesterday, I'm filming this on the 1st of September, uh, we only generated four kilowatt hours then. Um, that compares today, which is the 1st of September, where we've generated over 17 kilowatt hours. Um, talking about 17 kilowatt hours, you can see that there's quite a few days around that amount being generated and in the middle of the month we did have two very good days where we generated over um, 30 kilowatt hours. But for a British summer that's probably where I'd actually expect to be, up at that high 20s, um, low 30 kilowatt hours. So as I say, um, August um, a little bit disappointing. But it also matters. Um, so my total energy um, generation for the month was just 490 kilowatt hours. So that's down on July, where we had 510 kilowatt hours generated. And July, I said, was a particularly bad month for generation, especially compared to June and May, where we were up above 700. So it was a big drop off. So this reader suggests that we're on the downward uh, curve for generation for the rest of the year. But the question is, where did uh, how did this energy get used? So that's what this graph shows. So as usual, blue is the export. So there's still a lot of export throughout the month. Uh, green is energy that I've self-used. So this is real-time energy use. So this is energy coming off the roof and then going straight into an appliance. Um, as you can see, it's actually fairly consistent it's about between one and two kilowatt hours a day. Um, Battery, which is in yellow, this is energy that we've stored in the battery and then we've used um, as needed for the day. Um, that does fluctuate a little bit depending on how much energy we do use. And the red is the inputs. This is where we've had to rely on the grid. So there's always a little bit of import of 
what is equivalent of a few tenths or a tenth um, of a kilowatt hour and that's just um, the system stabilizing itself to the grid and um, being a bit slow to react to sudden um, high loads however you can see that on two days one of which was the 18th and one of the 19th you can actually see quite a bit of visible um, import and that's because that tallies to that day where there was only two kilowatt hours um, of sunlight so as usual this is the um, graph of my um, monthly usage um, as you can see I'm still very stable in my usage uh, this month using um, 196, 197 uh, kilowatt hours. Um, I usually use around the 200 mark, and I say that's quite consistent. 189.4 of them were from my own electricity, so this was self used, and I had to import 7.72, which is a little bit up on last month, and about twice as much as I used in um, June. But let's delve down into the figures a little bit more. So as I say, we generated 490 kilowatt hours this month, 189 were self-used, import was 100, sorry, it was 7.72, which means that we had we exported back to the grid um, about 300 kilowatt hours, just over. Um, and when you convert that into money, that um, means that so energy have paid us fifteen pounds seventy eight p that self use of one hundred and eighty nine if we were having to pay British gas at that nineteen and a half p that would have cost us thirty seven pounds and ten pence so that 's how much we 've saved so we can add that to the fifteen pounds and seventy eight p and that comes out to um, monthly income or monthly yield or whatever you want to call it monthly payback of 52 pounds and 88 p that's one pound and 12 p less than last month and uh nearly 16 pounds uh worse than our best month which was may where we made uh had a monthly payback of 68 pounds and 72 pence that um 7.72 import that cost us £1.45 uh, so that does mean that this month has only cost us £1.45 in import which you know is nothing to complain about and overall that means this month we were 3.77% reliant on the grid or 96.23% uh, self-sufficient. This has now uh, meant from this year, last. Well, if you watched my video last week, you know I did my first year have, having solar panels because last week was the point where uh, that marked one year since I had this, uh, these panels and battery installed and I went through all the figures for that year. So just looking at 2023, so far we've generated f uh, 3,758 kilowatt hours and we've spent about £33.22 on import which means so far this year we've saved £278.81 so we are quite low usage if we were higher um, energy users we would be getting much faster payback and also if we were on a higher energy tariff or higher priced energy tariff we fixed about two years ago just before the uh, energy prices went up massively and from our SEG payments this year um, so far it's amounted to just under £122 so we are in a net or oh, plus £400 overall and so far this year we have been 10.65% uh, reliant on the grid or about 89% self-reliant. Anyway, I uh, hope you found that video interesting. Throughout September I'll be releasing some uh, more videos about um, my experience with solar panels, electric vehicles and all that sort of stuff. And I might actually finally get around to making some videos about batteries, how they work, so I can explain the science to you, uh, which batteries to look out for um, and which battery technologies are likely to go the distance and which ones are likely to fall by the wayside. Um, so, 
Thank you for watching. As I say, if you haven't subscribed, please do so, and I'll see you again very soon.